Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be sharing 10 of my favorite foreign films of all time. That's as of now, so this list is definitely subject to change in the future, but for the time being, these are my 10 favorite foreign films. So stick around and we'll get started. Welcome once again, my name is Austin, and this channel is all about helping you to dig deeper and go further to better understand faith and film and everything that's in between. If that sounds exciting to you, make sure you click the subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on any future content. First on my list, we have the movie Shadow. Now this is an interesting one because this is a movie that I liked the first time I watched it. I would even venture into really liked territory, but I didn't love it until my second viewing. I definitely was drawn in by the visuals of the movie, which I'll get to in a minute, uh, but the story for some reason, I just had a little bit of a hard time following it, uh, just because it's a little bit complicated and um, not convoluted, but it's uh, it's it's a bit more of an in-depth story uh, to it, and there's a lot of different elements that are kind of up in the air, lots of things taking place, and um, there's a lot to follow and track along with. But upon my second viewing of this movie, what really did this movie in for me as one of my favorite foreign films is the visual style, especially upon my second watch. I just fell in love with the cinematography, the framing of each of the shots, and most notably the color palette of this movie. It's really interesting the way they did it. This movie essentially looks black and white, though it's shot in color. Uh, the the colors are very muted. There's a lot of blacks and grays and whites to make it look black and white. And it really enhances kind of the dreariness of the story that's being told, especially when we reach the action sequences uh, in the second half of the movie where there's violence and there's blood because the blood is still colorized in red. So it really jumps off the screen and really enhances the action that's taking place. So I just fell in love with the way that that movie was framed with each of its shots. Each shot could easily be a painting. It's gorgeous. And then just the action sequences. There's one great one-on-one -on -one action sequence fight. Then there's another one where there's an army that's sliding down this hill on these umbrella, bladed umbrellas, shooting off arrows and all this kind of stuff. It's a great great movie. There's minor action in this one than it kind of looks and appears like, but when the action kicks in, it's fantastic. The story is really good, really interesting too. We're kind of following this guy who's kind of in as a double for this one guy to kind of spy on certain things and whatnot, but things get complicated. There's love interest, there's drama, there's political intrigue. There's so much to this movie that just it's the best of kind of everything. It's fantastic. So I do do really love this movie and it definitely makes my list for my favorite foreign films. The next one on my list is one that is was the first criterion in my collection, actually, fun fact, and is one that I've only seen once but absolutely adored it that first time and I can't wait to check it out again. That is Akira Kurosawa's Seven Samurai. Now I'm actually hoping to rewatch this one again soon because it's been a little while now since I've seen it, but it's hard to find the time for with it being a three and a half hour movie, I think. Uh, but it's just a fantastic story, excellent characters. This came out in 1954, but it still held my attention through its entire runtime. I was enthralled with the story, the action. Uh, it's so well done. This was, I think, one of the first kind of ensemble cast movies uh, to be released. And uh, as the title says, Seven Samurai, there's seven kind of main characters in this movie. And it does a great job of balancing each and every one of them to really feel like a character, give them their moment to shine uh, and not necessarily just feel like a persona that's take, that's there on the screen, but each one really feels like a person and a character. And like I said, it's all fantastically crafted. The action sequences are epic and it's impressive the fact that they were able to achieve this back in the 50s. So it's fantastic storytelling, great action, really epic style of a movie, and it's great. So if you've not seen this one, I highly recommend it. Definitely one of my favorite foreign films of all time. Next, we have a movie that I don't yet have in my collection. I'm hoping it'll get a Blu-ray, though it's unlikely. And that is the movie that was released this year called RRR. This is one of my favorite movies to come out this year. I've seen it twice already. I'm itching for a third watch already because this movie is so entertaining. It tells this epic and huge story. It's like a three hour long movie of these two guys that uh, become friends, but there's this secret between each of them that could cause them to be enemies. It tells a great, great story. Uh, it, it's melodramatic, but it's so well done. It's entertaining. The action is over the top and bombastic, 
The action is over the top and bombastic, but so much fun to watch. It's ridiculously fun to watch. And just the epic scale of this movie between its characters, its story, its action sequences, it's fantastic. So if you've not had a chance to check this one out, I did a video on it. It was the first Indian movie that I've ever watched and really loved it. I already got a bunch of recommendations from people who checked out that video of more Indian movies to watch. And I can't wait to do so because I loved this one. Next, we have another movie that actually was another one similar to Shadow that took me a couple of viewings to come around to, and that is the movie Train to Busan. This is one that, again, I liked after my first viewing, but upon my second viewing, really fell in love with it. It's It's got a really great story to it about uh, a man who's kind of not necessarily an absent father, but at least a mentally absent father who's uh, not really in his daughter's life, just buys her things so that he, she kind of likes him, but she really wants a good relationship with him. And it just so happens the two of them hop on a train to bring uh, his daughter to his ex-wife to visit, and a zombie outbreak happens while they're on the train. And so most of this movie takes place on the train. It is really, really well done and orchestrated. The, the way that they progress through the train uh, and all the different destinations that they stop at along the way, it's so well done and crafted. The zombie effects are great. The zombies are those like fast, rapid, crazy zombies that are always fun to enjoy. Uh, and it just tells a great story, especially when it, you kind of dig down into the heart of it, of being uh, a father and daughter story. And then just you get great zombie action along the way, too. So this is one that I would definitely consider one of my favorite zombie flicks and one of my favorite uh, zombie films and one of my favorite foreign films. Next, we have another movie that I've talked about pretty extensively, I feel like, on this channel, and that is the Jackie Chan Police Story movies. Most notably, the first one is probably my favorite of the two that I have seen for these. This movie absolutely blew my mind the first time I watched it. Jackie Chan made this movie after making a few movies in the U.S., kind of got frustrated with the U.S. filmmaking system, went back to Hong Kong, got all the time and uh, energy that he needed to make his own film the way he wanted. He wrote, directed, starred in, sang an original song for this movie, did all of his own stunts. This movie blows my mind every time I watch it. The stunts are absolutely insane. There's a not necessarily a gag reel at the end of the movie, but they show you where they messed up in the stunts and stuff when people get hurt and stuff. It's insane. The stunts in this movie will blow your mind. If you're into stunts and you've not seen this one, you've got to check it out. It's got a good story along the way too. It kind of gets a little cheesy in moments, but I mean, it's an 80s movie. So you just got to love that 80s cheese stuff. So again, I love Jackie Chan. This made me fall in love with him all over again. Uh, and these first two police stories, especially the first one for me, are fantastic and one of my favorite foreign films. Next, we have a movie that I actually just watched this past, or re-watched this past week, I should say. Uh, I have a double pack. This is Blade of the Immortal and 13 Assassins. 13 Assassins is my favorite of this two pack and the one that I rewatched and wanted to talk about. This is another one that definitely is much higher on the, well, not much higher. This is one of the ones that definitely be one of the top ones I recommend. This is one of my favorite samurai films. It's so, so great. It tells this story about this absolutely heinous and evil guy who's just ruling over these people of this, I don't know if it's a whole nation necessarily, but at least this region. And he's horrible, treats them horribly, kills them willy-nilly, cares only about himself. And it's about these 13 samurai who are hired to assassinate him. And so they have to plot this assassination while he's moving from one location to the other. And it's a fairly straightforward story, but much of it, at least the whole, pretty much the whole second half of this movie is all action and it pays off so well. There's a huge practicality to this movie that I love. It really feels like they built this entire village, which I'm sure a good bit of it was built for sets and stuff like that. Uh, but the logistics of it all makes sense for the action sequences that are taking place in it. Uh, I really latched onto the characters. There's not a ton of depth to all of them being 13 of them, uh, kind of like how they did in Seven Samurai. So you don't get a ton of depth to them, but there are a few that you do get a kind of a fleshed out story for. Uh, most notably the guy who's leading the group, but I just love the simplicity of the story, but the effectiveness that it has and the incredible action sequence. It's truly an epic scale of a fight sequence. The flow of it moves so well. There's a good variety of different fight sequences. It's incredible. So this is one of the foreign films that I most recommend to people. I originally checked it out when it was on Amazon Prime, I think. I don't know if it's still streaming there or elsewhere, but if you check out 
any movie on this list, this is definitely one of the ones I recommend most is 13 Assassins. So definitely give this one a watch if you've not already. Next, we have another one that I'm really itching for another rewatch on. I don't know when it's going to happen because this is the longest movie in my collection. That is Red Cliff. It's technically in two parts. So you got part one, part two, but they're undeniably one film. And then this movie, when you combine both parts together, is nearly a four and a half hour long. I think it's a little over four and a half hours long. Each part's like two hours and 20 minutes. So it's it's a little over four and a half hours long. Obviously you can break it up into two parts, but this movie is the definition of epic. It's a John Woo movie. So most people would know John Woo from like Mission Impossible 2, Face Off, movies like that. Um, I really want to see is, I think it's hard hard-boiled movie that I I really have heard great things about and want to check it out, but that's besides the point. So this is my favorite John Woo movie. It's truly epic. The action sequences are insanely massive. The amount of armies that they have together for these action sequences. It tells this huge story of these nations that are battling each other. Uh, and it just, like I said, it just it encompasses so much but it does so much so well, and it, it's literally the definition of epic for me. I fell in love with this movie the first time I watched it. I watched it in one sitting the first time I watched it, all four and a half hours. It was fantastic. I checked this one out uh, on a blind buy, actually. I bought the Blu-ray because I heard it recommended on a YouTube channel. So this movie is insane. I love it. The action sequences are so entertaining. There's a great story with the different nations that are battling each other and their motivations for it all. This movie is amazing. I'm just going to keep, if I keep talking about it, I'm just going to keep saying it's amazing. So I love this movie so much. Like I said, another one that I'm itching for a rewatch on, but it's so long. I'm not sure when that's going to happen, but I can't wait to do so. Next, we have a Spanish film, and this is one uh, that I thoroughly enjoy and love getting immersed in. That is Guillermo del Toro's Pan's Labyrinth. This movie is so immersive, and I love the way that this story is told for this one. It's it's very fantastical and it's uh, well described here of kind of on the same altar of high fantasy as the Lord of the Rings trilogy. This world feels so immersive and lived in and well thought out, uh, but it's just all told in such a beautiful way of this girl who's struggling through, uh, I think it's a revolutionary war in Spain. Um, and she's kind of trying to uh, balance life living with a general who is on the opposite side of kind of where she's coming from, as well as these rebels that are trying to fight them at the same time. So it takes place on this homestead in the middle of nowhere in Spain, I believe. And it just tells the story of her kind of escapism into this fantastical world of these beautifully designed creatures. Uh, I don't want to give too much away on this one, but if you've not seen this one uh, and you are a fan of Guillermo del Toro's work, it's fantastic. Some of his best creature designs, a beautifully... Um, told story about just dealing with war and the trauma that all of that is, kind of the escapism that is within fantasy. It's a beautiful story. It's sad, but it's beautiful at the same time. And I love checking this movie out. I've recommended it to a number of people. I got to show it to my brother last year. He really liked it as well. So definitely one of my favorite foreign films. Starting to wrap things up a little bit. Another one that I don't yet have in my collection, but do have on order. I'm just waiting for it to come in because I had to import it, my first imported title, and that is uh, The Last of the Roroni Kenshin movies. I do have the first three back here, but the final movie, which is called The Beginning, funny enough, uh, being a prequel to the rest of the movies, is a fantastic movie. I love this whole series of five films, but most notably this movie ends on such a high note for the franchise, going back to the beginning and getting to kind of see the journey that Kenshin goes on throughout these films is amazing. There's a beautiful love story told throughout it as well as incredibly raw and violent action sequences that are so well choreographed that I thoroughly enjoyed. And just all of this goes together for this really beautiful movie and a beautiful way to end this series. So if you've not checked out the Rurouni Kenshin films, I've been kind of getting my brother through them slowly. We're on the third one now, about halfway through. He's really enjoying them so far. The fourth and the fifth one, fifth one being the one I'm talking about, are streaming on Netflix. I think the first one is actually too. So give them a watch because they're great. And if you need to buy them on Blu-ray, just do it because they're that good. I love these the series. It's a great set of movies. But the final film in that series especially just really ended things in such a good way for me that is definitely one of my favorite foreign films and samurai films. These movies totally got me really into the samurai genre a couple of years ago and I've been been strong in it ever since. 
All right, finishing things off with my final favorite foreign film for this list, we have The Raid Redemption. This movie is absolutely insane. It's, <laughs> it's another one of those movies that just fires on all cylinders. It's action-packed from beginning to end. It tells an intense an awesome story. It's another one that's one of those just simple, straightforward ones. It's like an hour and a half long movie. It tells the story of this brother, or this man, who his uh, wife is nearly uh, giving birth to his first child. He finds out his brother, who has been missing for a while, is a part of this gang and is trying to get in and get him out. So his he's a police officer, or like a SWAT equivalent, and they're raiding this building of this gangster. And they have to work their way up to the top story to where he is uh, to kill him and get rid of him. So it's it's awesome. This is some of the best fight choreography I have ever seen in a movie. I've seen this movie four or five times now. It's incredible. It still blows my mind every time I watch it of just the flawlessness of its execution. It's brutal and it's gritty, but it's so fun and interesting to watch because of the work you can tell they put into kind of designing and laying out each of these sequences. They're so creative. Each one tops the last. The way they use the environments around them, it's incredible. So if, you've, if you're an action junkie and you've not seen this movie, I'm sure I've said this before, do yourself a favor and check out The Raid Redemption. The second one is a lot of people's favorite in the franchise and they consider it a little better, but I'm a little more partial to this one just because of the simplicity of the story being only like a 90 minute movie and just action from start to finish. I like that just a little bit more than the more in-depth storytelling of the second movie. So definitely, this is probably my favorite foreign film of all time. I will say that uh, being at the end of this video. So check out any of these movies that I recommended because they're all great, all fantastic. Thank you for checking out this video. Thank you for sticking around to the end. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>